Hey, what's up everyone? Josh Quinones here, and this right here is OnePlus's new flagship, the OnePlus 11. Now, when it comes to the overall design of this device, OnePlus really wanted to keep it unique and, you know, bring us something that really stands out from the crowd of other flagship devices. And they definitely did that with this. I mean, when you look at this device, you know it's a OnePlus device because of that camera module in the back. And they kind of went with the same design as their last flagship model. The only difference is that camera module, instead of being squared off, it's more of a round shape. So it almost looks like you have a camera that came with a smartphone rather than you know, a smartphone <laughs> that came with a camera. It's definitely a head turner for someone who has never seen a design like this. But overall, it's definitely unique. You get that three camera setup in the back. I'm really liking this green color overall. It's called their Eternal Green, which is like a nice frosted finish. It is a glossy finish, so it will pick up a bit of fingerprints. You will, you know, kind of find yourself maybe rubbing it down a little bit, kind of wiping it down to get those fingerprints off of there. But when it's nice and clean, I mean, it definitely has a very beautiful look to it. All around the sides, you do have metal edges. And then going to the display, it is a beautiful looking display. 6.7 inch, 120 hertz, all screen display. You do get a punch hole camera cut up at the top left corner. And when it comes to the edges on this display, you do get a slight curve as well. And it's not a super small curve, but it's not too, too curvy as well. It's really seamless, just the way it kind of curves around to the edge and then going to the back kind of curves to the back as well. And it actually feels really good in the hands. I don't find that curve to really get in the way when kind of using this display, using this device. I don't find my palm touching any apps by accident and having them open up when I'm using this device. So when it comes to overall feel in the hand, it feels really, really good. Down to the bottom of the device, we do have the cutouts for the USB Type-C charging port, microphone. We got a SIM card slot down there at the bottom, the speaker as well going to the top. Uh, we do have the speaker and microphone as well going over to the right. We get a little toggle to be able to switch the phone from ring to vibrate to silent. And then we have the power button. And then over to the left, we have the volume rockers as well. But overall, when it comes to the design, definitely a very unique look, something different that really screams one plus and definitely sets it apart from other flagship devices on the market. So you're gonna see this and you're gonna know this is a OnePlus device. Now, when it comes to the overall unboxing experience, we get something with OnePlus that we don't get with a lot of other companies these days. And that is a nice big fat box like this <laughs> right here, as you can see. And that's because this box does not only come with the foam and the user manual and, you know, little adapter or whatever, and, you know, a charging cord, but it also comes with a charging adapter, 100 watts right here. Now, the back of this is a USB type A to USB type C, that's the cord that comes in the box. And OnePlus said the reason that they did this, well, not with this, but with the cord that comes with it, the charging cord, the reason they did this is because if you do, you know, a bit of traveling and you happen to use maybe a third party charger, or uh, some hotels have that plug-in where you can just plug in the wire and not have to plug in your actual um, a charging adapter. A lot of those are still USB type A, which is why they gave us this cable with a USB type A to USB type C. So that was their reasoning for that. But I'm really glad OnePlus included the charging brick at 100 watts. And I will tell you, this phone definitely charges <laughs> super, super fast. And I'll have a separate video on a lot of stuff that I talk about in this specific video. This is just to give you a quick rundown of what this device is all about, but I'll have tons of videos to come. So make sure you're subscribed if you are not subscribed yet. But overall unboxing experience is great. And it's always nice to have that charging brick included in the box as well. Now, another cool thing that you don't see on many flagship devices these days is that this one actually comes with a pre-installed screen protector. So you don't have to worry too much about accidentally scratching up your screen or possibly cracking it if you accidentally drop it a little bit or anything like that. Out of the box, it does come with a pre-installed screen protector to keep it protected right away. The only thing you really have to worry about is buying a case for it. And on Amazon, I only found one case so far. I haven't looked lately, but when I did look at first, I only found one case that was available for this device. And it's a really cheap case, but I'll link it down in the description below anyways, in case you want to check it out. It's just a cheap clear case but very cool that a screen protector is already pre-installed on this device already to go ahead and get it nice and protected for you but even with the screen protector we're still getting that gorilla glass victus so it is going to be more durable as well we're also getting an always-on display as well and an in-display fingerprint sensor which works great at least 
I find it to work well every, pretty much every single time. And it also comes with facial recognition, which works even better. I mean, the phone won't even have to directly be looking at my face. The phone can just kind of be down at an angle like this with my face from back here. And it's kind of already detecting my face. So all I got to do is just unlock the phone. It, <laughs> it's that fast. So it pretty much doesn't really even give me the chance to use that in-display fingerprint sensor because of how fast the facial recognition is. Even at night, because of how bright the screen can get, you know, when you do decide to turn it on like this in the dark, it's still ready to go and detect your face and, you know, unlock your phone for you. But if you decide, if you decide not to use that facial recognition, the in-display fingerprint sensor works fast as well every time. So you won't be dis disappointed with either of them. Now this display also comes with Dolby Vision. So just looking at it alone, it is a beautiful looking display, especially when watching content. I mean, content looks great on this display, especially if you're watching it at uh, the highest quality that you possibly can on here. I mean, it looks really, really Really good especially since you're getting this all screen experience here i mean the display is absolutely beautiful with pretty much no matter what you're watching whether you're watching netflix disney plus youtube or like i said just using the phone like this on its main home screen it's absolutely beautiful the colors just really they they pop really really good nice and vibrant and of course you can go into the display settings and edit that up if you want but it is just absolutely beautiful especially when just using the device alone you know you get that 120 hertz of smoothness and then when it comes to watching content another thing that i was not disappointed with at all are the speakers on this device right here i mean they get loud of course they got that dolby atmos but i mean they get really really loud they got that night they have a nice full sound to them of course you know you got that stereo uh speaker and they are set up for spatial audio so they will support that with any videos that give that out but I mean they sound really really good nice and full nice and bassy they got a good bass sound to them and I don't really find them to distort with pretty much anything that I listen to on this device with the volume all the way up. You, you know, what? Here's, here's a little sound sample just so you guys can see what I'm talking about. So as you can see, the speakers on this device are definitely a winner. I mean, you will not be disappointed. Now, of course, you know, the camera and microphone probably don't do the speakers justice as to if you were actually listening to them in person, but I can tell you, you will not be disappointed, especially when watching content and playing games. It just makes the experience just that much better. Now, when it comes to overall performance of this device, you know, OnePlus has always been known for, you know, their super snappy, smooth, speedy device. They've always been known about speed when it comes to the performance of their devices. Now, like I mentioned earlier, you do get that, you know, this super buttery smooth 120 hertz display. And I will tell you, it's definitely a smooth experience. And when using a OnePlus device, it's just, it's always just a different experience than when using other flagship devices. I mean, there's just something to the smoothness of a OnePlus device and just the overall experience. And it just makes it really, really enjoyable. But one thing that I did notice about this device that kind of got annoying, you know, every once in a while is the app drawer. Now, not the app drawer itself. The app drawer looks nice. It's smooth, but it's when I want to scroll up and maybe I'm, I, I don't want to be in the app drawer after all, and I'm scrolling down right away. It won't go down it just kind of bounces back up unless i let it fully scroll all the way back up to the top and then it will let me go down so if i go like this as you can see it's not letting me until i let it stop and then go so yeah that's just kind of something that i had to find myself getting used to unless of course i do turn off animations but if you turn off animations then it just everything just doesn't look as cool <laughs> but other than that i mean i've had no problems with anything else social media uh scrolling through youtube uh the web browser just scrolling through the phone itself everything has been performing great so far me personally i haven't had any moments of freezing up or jitteriness or anything like that it's just that one little thing when it comes to the app drawer but everything else 
has been performing great, especially with gaming. This actually has a gaming mode in it to where you can pretty much be able to pick how you want your games to perform. So there's actually an app called Games, which will hold all your games for you within that app. So let's see, for instance, say I wanna to go to Apex Legends and let me go ahead and play it. Once you're in a game, if you swipe down the top right corner, now I can't remember, I believe you can be able to switch which side you want this on, but if you swipe it down, it lets you know what frames per second you're playing at. It lets you know what your battery life is. It lets you know what the temperature is on your phone. So if it's starting to heat up, it'll let you know as well. You can change the brightness within that app. It's got a championship mode, which gives you the maximum performance when it comes to playing games on this device. Uh, you have the option to turn notifications on or off. You got screen recording, touch optimization, quick startup. Uh, orientation lock, you got gaming filters, a voice changer, volume settings, system status, and GPU settings as well. So it's almost like you got a little professional gaming system in this device right here. And it has an advanced cooling system that they say is more advanced than other devices like a Samsung device or a Pixel device. And I've actually tested this out with multiple games, you know, PUBG, Call of Duty Mobile, Apex Legends, and I really didn't find the device to heat up too much. It might have gotten just a little bit warm, but as far as overheating goes, I mean, I didn't find any discomfort. I didn't find it to get too hot in the hand. So it actually handles games very, very well and super smooth as well. And like I said, if you wanna know what frames per second your games are playing at, this little module right here at the top right corner will definitely let you know that. And you can see it drop, you can see it rise up, you know, depending on what you're doing within that game. And only certain games, of course, will support, you know, uh, 30 frames per second, 60 frames per second, or even 120 frames per second. I will have a whole dedicated video just to gaming on this device so you guys can see what I'm talking about. But gaming on this device is definitely enjoyable, especially since you can control uh, what kind of performance you want within your games. And then of course the chip behind this that is allowing this phone to perform the way it does is the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 processor. So you got the new Snapdragon processor in this as well that allows it to perform as snappy and as smoothly as it does. Now, when it comes to battery life on the OnePlus 11, I haven't really paid too much, I'll be honest with you guys, I haven't really paid too much attention to what my screen on time has been like. I've just kind of been using the phone every day uh, throughout my, and just, you know, seeing how it is, just using it comfortably and seeing if I'm going to have to worry about, you know, throwing it on the charger midday or later on in the day or not. And to be honest with you guys, I mean, battery life for me has been great. And if you've seen my all day battery drain test videos, when it comes to these flagship devices or non-flagship devices as well, you'll know that I have some pretty heavy usage. So I will have a dedicated video to that as well. Like I said, if you're not subscribed yet, make sure you subscribe. You're not gonna wanna miss out on any of these future videos I got coming with the OnePlus 11 right here. I'll be doing an all day battery drain test to show you guys what my usage is like throughout the day, to show you what my screen on time is every so many hours and what the battery percentage is as well. You know how much it drops throughout the day. And we're gonna see if this phone can actually last me an entire day without having to worry about throwing it on a charger. And then we'll also check out charging speeds right after that video. I'll do another one showing you guys a live charging test so you can see just how fast this phone charges because it does charge very fast as well, especially you know with the charger that comes in the box with it. I mean, it's able to charge this 5,000 milliamp battery in this device super, super fast. And it actually shows you on screen the percentage that it's going up, it, you can see it like going up 1%, 2%, 3% or, or whatever percentage you're at, you can actually see it right there, how fast it's charging. And what you're seeing right now is just a little teaser, but yes, this phone definitely charges super, super fast. I believe you can get a full charge within 27 minutes, if I'm not mistaken. I haven't really timed it myself, but I know looking at the specs, I believe it was 27 minutes. I don't know. Correct me in the comments if I'm wrong. And not only does it have super fast charging, but it also comes with intelligent charging as well. So say you throw it on the charger when you're sleeping at night, it'll slow down the charging for you. That way it increases the life of the actual battery in this device right here. So it's not super fast charging it, you know, every single time you charge it because you know, when you're sleeping at night, you don't really need that super fast charging. So it has that intelligent charging as well. Now, one thing about this device is that it does not come with wireless charging. So that's kind of a bummer, but I mean, for me personally, 
I don't really mind that because I don't use wireless charging all the time anyways. I'd rather have a super fast charging phone that can charge, you know, wired rather than, you know, a phone that charges wirelessly, just not as fast because I would like to charge this up as fast as I can and then, you know, pull it off and start using it again. Now, I know for other people, wireless charging is a big deal because that's how they charge their phones. Maybe you got wireless chargers all, all around your house. And you know, it's a big deal for you because you can just set your phone down, have a charge while you're doing something and just pick it up. You know, you're ready to go. You don't have to worry about plugging something in and then unplugging it. So it's kind of a win lose uh, for me personally. I see it as a win. I'd rather, like I said, I'd rather have super fast wired charging, but y'all let me know what you prefer down in the comment section. Okay, now going back to the cameras on this device, like I said, it is a three camera setup in the back. We have an ultra wide angle lens, a main lens and a telephoto lens at two times. And then of course we have that flash back there as well. They have partnered with Hasselblad once again this year to uh, really bring us you know, some good cameras on this device. I was actually pretty impressed with the quality of the photos that I was getting on here. And I actually posted photos on Twitter without saying what phone I was using. I was just sharing some photos from my day. And there were some people that actually thought I was taking it with the Pixel device. Uh, some people even thought it was a Samsung device. I'm like, nope, sorry, can't tell you yet. But now you guys know. So if there's photos on my Twitter, that didn't have any hashtag this phone or that phone, it's because it was taken with the OnePlus 11. And the one thing I like about the cameras on this phone is that I'm able to take pictures of my youngest son, uh, my two older kids, and that's very important to me because I want a camera that can keep up with them, especially my youngest one. You know, he's always running around, you know, having a good time, and I wanna be able to capture these moments without getting you know a super blurry photo just because of the fact that he's moving well here's a couple of photos that you're seeing right now that i was able to capture of him with the cameras on this device and they surprisingly came out really good so the shutters that shows me that the shutter speed is fast enough to be able to capture you know a moving subject within the photo and you're still able to get a clear photo out of it so i was really happy with uh, the quality I was able to get in the photos right here taken of my son, even of my other kids. And then, of course, I have a portrait mode. So here's a picture of my daughter taken with portrait mode. And if you look around the edges, just around where her backpack is, it's a little bit blurry. But I mean, if you're just looking at the photo as a whole, you can't even notice that. I think overall, it's a good looking photo. And Honestly, I'm no professional photographer or anything like that. So all I really know is what I like and what I don't like. And so far with a lot of the pictures that I've taken with the cameras on this device, I've liked them so far because the quality has been great. I took a couple of macro photos as you're seeing here as well. I think those photos came out pretty good. There's this one right here that I think came out good, but could have came out a little bit better as you can see kind of up at the top towards the right side. It is a little blurry. In my opinion, it could have been a little bit more clear right there. And then going to this other photo, I took some selfies right here. So this is a selfie of myself at the snow taken with portrait mode. So as you can see, it does uh, blur out the background pretty good. It's got the edges going down pretty good as well. So overall, I think it's a good photo and I'm not much of a selfie guy either. I, I hate taking selfies. I just, I don't like taking pictures of myself. The only time I actually take selfies is, you know, for videos like this, just to, sh to show you guys what that selfie camera is capable of. And then here's some more pictures I took, just went out and about, so you can see what some of the quality is like. I got some zoom pictures as well. As you can see, trying out that telephoto lens, I think the pictures came out great as well. Overall, I think quality is good when taking photos during the day. Now, there was a few times where I was trying to take a portrait photo, kind of with this little birdhouse. I don't, I don't know what this is, or maybe a candle goes in there, but it just didn't quite get it right. I did try to take this photo a few times, but it still just blurred that left side of the subject just too much. And honestly, I just didn't like the way these photos came out. So it was kind of a hit or miss with that one. Actually, it was a miss <laughs> with that certain photo I was trying to take. And then when it comes to night photos, honestly, I think night photos could be better. Day photos, in my opinion, are good. I think they're good when it comes to night photos. It, it just kind of depends. I was able to take some good shots. So using night mode, here's what the original scenery looked like. This is how dark it was 
where all these palm trees were right here. They had lights on them. And then when I decided to use night mode, I mean, look how much it brightens up the photo. So right here, it actually did a good job at brightening up that photo right there. And I took a couple of them. I took one with the wide angle lens as well, and it still brightened it up good enough to get a decent photo with how dark it actually was right there. So did a good job right there. And then I actually took a night portrait mode as well, which I actually think did pretty good, especially with that bright light shining behind me up at the top right corner. I think it did pretty good for a night portrait mode shot. And then I just took a regular selfie shot as well, which it came out okay. It was a little bit blurry, but came out okay. And then here's a couple of other night photos, just so you guys can kind of get an idea of what the quality is like take you know using night mode with the cameras on this device so you guys let me know what you think about those down in the comment section now when it comes to a video video during the day like any device is good uh, in my opinion stabilization seemed good and i'm gonna have a full 4k video test up as well so i won't you know do too much of a deep dive into video here but overall i think video quality is good during the day stabilization is good whether you're, you're recording at 30 frames per second or 60 frames per second now when it comes to recording video with that selfie lens um, in the front honestly i i would not use this to record if i had the choice i would rather just use the rear facing cameras and just hold the phone towards me like that if i am going to record myself because it didn't seem like it didn't even seem like there was stabilization and you're only allowed to record at 1080p. So there is no 4K video recording with that front facing camera as well. So I really hope that OnePlus can maybe somehow with an update push 4K video recording, you know, to the front facing camera, you know, and give us some good stabilization as well. Then maybe, you know, we can get some good quality videos. But for now, I wouldn't really uh, recommend using that front facing camera unless if you have your phone set up on a tripod and maybe you're just talking on the phone, talking to the phone like that, then yeah, maybe that's a good time to record with the front facing camera. Otherwise, I'd rather use the rear facing camera. And then when it came to recording video at night, video quality was pretty okay as well. But like I said, I'm gonna have a full video on that. What you're seeing right now is just a little teaser to the video to come, but y'all can let me know what you think down in the comments. But one a cool feature that I think is included with this device is being able to use both cameras at the same time. Now, I know I said I wouldn't really record with the front facing camera, but the fact that that feature is there makes it pretty cool as well, because say maybe you wanna show your reaction to something and you'll be able to record yourself and record what you're seeing in front of you as well. So very cool feature there as well. But overall, I think cameras on this device are decent. Like I said, you can get some really, really good photos if you really wanted to. And then there, there will be those times where it kind of just misses and not gets that photo that you wanted to. But I will have a full camera review coming as well. So we can really, really, really test out the cameras on this device. Now, just going into the settings quickly here, this phone also comes with some special features. So of course we have split screen, will, which will allow you to open up two apps at the exact same time. It'll cut the screen in half to allow you to do that. You got flexible windows, which will allow you to, you know, have a floating window over any screen so if you quickly want to go to whatever you're doing in that little window you just click on it and it'll open up bigger for you if you want to do that you got quick return quick launch a smart sidebar so you can bring up the sidebar to quickly launch an app or a function you got kid space simple mode and work life balance so those are just some special features that come with this device as well now as far as availability goes actually starting today Pre-orders are now up. I'll have a special link down in the description below. This phone will only be available on OnePlus's website, Amazon and Best Buy. So no major carriers are going to be carrying this device, but you can buy it unlocked so you can be able to use with your carrier. Now, when it comes to colors, you get this green color that I have right here, and then you also get a Titan black color. So two colors are available, but I am really loving this green color right here. If you're looking for, if, if you're trying to decide between both colors, I can definitely recommend this one. I mean, it looks absolutely beautiful. Now you got two models. You got an eight gigabyte RAM model, a 16 gigabyte RAM model. And the one with eight gigabytes of RAM comes with 128 gigabytes of storage. And the other one comes with 256 gigabytes of storage. Now on oneplus.com, the eight gigabyte RAM model with 128 gigabytes of storage is going for $699 and $699.99 on Amazon and Best Buy. So an extra 99 cents if you do decide to buy on 
on Amazon and Best Buy, and that's for the black one only. Now, the one for 16 gigabytes of RAM with 256 gigabytes of storage, that's going for $799 on OnePlus.com and $799.99 on Amazon and Best Buy, and that's for both colors. So the one with less storage is only going to come in black. The one with more storage, you have the choice between both colors. And honestly, I say just go with the one with more storage anyways, because that's going for $799.99, which in my opinion, is a great price compared to you know other flagships out on the market right now that are coming you know over a thousand bucks i mean you can't go wrong with 800 bucks you know compared to those prices and it's been a great phone so far i mean i've been using this the past couple of weeks and now, I can say it's been a great phone so far. Now, like I said, you could pre-order today, but open sales will start on February 16th if you do want to wait until then. But overall, I mean, the phone seems very promising. So far, I've been enjoying the experience with this phone. Like I said, I'm going to have tons of videos coming out all throughout this week and next week. So if you're not subscribed yet, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on any other future videos I got coming for the OnePlus 11. Thank you so much, much for watching. If you did like this video, find it helpful, make sure you give it a huge thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe, hit that bell for notifications so you're not missing out on any other future videos to come. Thanks for watching. This is Josh Quinones. I will see you on the next one. Peace out.